Hello! Welcome to the Polyglot Files. My name is Michael and today we're doing a video on a very controversial topic in the linguistic community. I wasn't originally going to make a video this week because things have been pretty hectic with Christmas and New Year's and the holidays, but I got new lighting equipment and a new tripod and I thought I would try them out. Thanks mom and dad and Phil! So anyway, the topic of today's video is the Altaic language family. I've spoken briefly about this topic in the Languages of Russia video, and in short, the Altaic languages are a proposed language family. Currently, it is estimated that there are over 150 language families, not including language isolates, but only 18 of these language families contain at least 1% of the 7,400 languages spoken on Earth. The largest language family is the Niger-Congo languages, followed by the Austronesian languages, which includes Malay and Tagalog. The Indo-European languages come in at number 5, despite the fact that they are the most spoken, with almost 3 billion combined speakers. And the Afro-Asiatic languages, which includes languages like Arabic and Hebrew, are at number 7. The initial seeds for the Altaic language family theory were in 1844, when a philologist by the name of Matthias Castrin was studying the Uralic language family. Matthias proposed that the Uralic languages, itself containing Finnish and Hungarian and Estonian, were in fact related to other languages, such as Turkish and Mongolian. Over the years, this initial theory changed. The Uralic languages got taken out of the equation, but languages like Korean and Japanese were added. By the 1960s, the Altaic languages theory attempted to unite large sections of Asia, linking languages like Mongolian to Turkish or Korean to Japanese. The theory encompassed about 75 individual languages, most or all of which were said to be related because they shared common features such as a subject-object-verb-word order, a lack of grammatical gender, vowel harmony, and highly agglutinative grammars. Further research was done during the 1980s and the 1990s, and the theory gained quasi-acceptance in around 1991. A researcher by the name of Sergei Starostin used 110 of the most common words across all languages to compare the languages within the Altaic language family. Through his analysis, he discovered that the Turkic languages and the Mongolian languages had a lexical similarity of 20%. Further, the Turkic languages and the Tunguzic languages had a lexical similarity of 18%. Turkic languages in Korean had 17%, Mongolic and Tunguzic had 22%, Mongolic and Korean had 16%, and finally, Tunguzic and Korean had a lexical similarity of 21%. Later, in 2003, Starostein and two other linguists published a book called An Etymological Dictionary of the Altaic Languages, and they compared 2,600 cognates between all their proposed Altaic languages, this time Japanese included. Through this analysis, they had some very interesting results. For example, you can see on the screen that there are four languages being used, Japanese, Korean, Mongolian, and Turkish. The first word, one of the 2,600 that they compared, was the word hard. Not only do all of the translations start with the k sound, but they also all end in vowels, except for Korean. The same can be said for the word black, translated into these four languages. They all begin with a k sound, and three out of four of these words have the letter R, either somewhere in the middle or at the end, except for, again, Korean, which does seem to be the odd one out. So with all the lexical and grammatical evidence that there seems to be to link these languages together, why is it that the topic of the Altaic languages is so controversial, and why are these links so contested? Firstly, critics of this theory are not convinced that these languages are related to each other just based off of similar grammatical features or lexical similarities alone. To explain the similarities between these languages, critics point out that the languages of the Altaic language family would have experienced a large amount of language contact. This means, for example, that it's not surprising that the Turkic languages and the Mongolic languages share similar features because they are spoken relatively close to one another, and their languages are thus susceptible to borrowing each other's words or each other's features. 
And furthermore, just because two languages or a group of languages share similar grammatical features or have the same words, it doesn't necessarily mean that these languages are related. Despite the fact that it's hard to determine if two languages or a group of languages are related based simply off of their vocabulary or their grammar, the Altaic language's biggest problem, arguably, goes back to a basic concept in linguistics. Through historical linguistics, we can determine a language's evolution over time. By combining historical records and making educated guesses, we can theorize what languages sounded like many, many years ago, and we can also see where two languages initially split, having come from a common ancestor language. The point I'm trying to make, though, is that through analysis, we can see how languages have become more dissimilar over time. Inversely, this means that the further we look back in time, the more similar these languages should be getting, because in theory, they all are originating from a common ancestor if they are part of the same language family. However, the exact opposite has happened in the Altaic language family. The biggest criticism of the Altaic languages, and the primary reason why most linguists discredit this theory, is because the farther you look back in time, the more dissimilar the Altaic languages seem to get. In short, their similarities should increase, not decrease, as we travel back in time. Despite this, the debate for the Altaic languages is still pretty lively, and even for myself, I think that there are good arguments on both sides. But what do you think? Do you think the Altaic language family theory has merit? Do you speak one of the languages involved? Let me know in the comments below. And before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to give a big thank you to everybody who was watching slash everybody who has ever watched one of my videos. I started this channel back in August and it absolutely blows my mind how quickly we've grown. We are at almost 1,000 subscribers and last time I checked we had about 85,000 views. So I just want you to know that I am super grateful for every single one of you and I wish you the best in 2017. Alright, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to share, and definitely check out my social media information. I have a Facebook, a Twitter, and an Instagram. And as usual, thanks for watching the Polyglot Files. I will see you next time. Bye!